The L3 Harris Next Generation Aiming Laser and the Wilcox Industries Ruggedized Aiming Illumination Device, otherwise known as the Ingall and the Radex, are two of the most technological advanced laser aiming devices on the market. In a previous video, which we'll link below, we've done an overview of the functions of both of these and what they look like through the tube when you're actually using them with the laser and the illuminator and the settings on both. The purpose of this video is we get a lot of questions on just the construction, the differences, and kind of which we prefer. So we want to do a quick video and just go over both, both of the devices and show where they shine, the cons, and what we think of each. So we'll start with the Ingall. The Ingall is super awesome. Starting from the front, you've got your illuminator, your visible, and your IR laser. Two diffuser caps. You've got your fire control button, your windage and elevation adjustments, your mode selector knob, your battery cap, your uh, port for your pressure pad, and your illuminator divergence adjustment. On the RAID, we've got your all-in-one, your illuminator, your visible laser, and your IR illuminator, or your IR laser, your cap, your function control settings, your zeroing for your windage and elevation, your fire control button, your selector knobs, your divergence settings. This is a sensor for lighting conditions, your pressure pad port, and your battery cap. Also, the Radex has an output screen that shows you your function settings that you're in and your battery uh, levels. So just kind of, kind of going over some pros and cons of each, starting with the end goal. Some of the pros that we really like is construction. This is a very small, rugged device. It is, it is a metal device, it is not a polymer device, and it's overall just very easy to use. One thing to note with the Ingall is where the illuminator and the lasers are separated, this is compatible with front sight, which is one of the reasons why it did win the contract, and it is more versatile in that regard because if you are using a front sight post or a uh, flip up front sight, this is going to be compatible. So that is definitely a positive of the end goal. Working back, the fire control button, um, it is a little small, but still very tactile, very easy to use, and a good centered design. So shooting ambidextrous, it's very easy to do. Your windage and elevation adjustments, they are a little small. So one thing that we will note, and there's uh, something about the RAID that's hard to do in the field that we'll get to in a second, but one thing that is hard to do in the field with things unless you plan for a very small screwdriver is zeroing this without a specific screwdriver because this is a flathead uh, screw and it is very small. So one thing to note if you are gonna use the Ingall is to have a very small, uh, say like a watch or a sunglass screwdriver in your kit because you are gonna need that to zero this device. The selector switch is very, very tactile. And that's one thing that we like a lot over the RAID because the RAID, it's very easy to move this, where as the Ingall, this selector switch is very tactile. So it's very difficult to move with your kit if it's in a bag. So if this is something that you're gonna use in a bag gun or be transporting and have to deploy, deploy very quickly, we would recommend the Ingall because of that feature. Also, the Illuminator Divergence is the same way. It's more, it's a, it's a harder turn than the RAID. And so if you're throwing this down in a bag, areas where this could potentially move and your illuminator divergence, although easy to fix on the fly, that is something that's something you should note. The pressure pad port, this is a proprietary port. It does come with a cap and a plug for this, which is one nice thing to give you an extra layer of security for uh, water resistance. Um, we, one thing to note is we did take uh, wire cutters and cut this one off, but typically the cap is wired to the, uh, to the device. Um, but when we use these with pressure pads, um, we don't like this dangling, so we cut that off. The battery cap is very large, and it's very coarse threads, very, very easy to turn, and this is something that you can take off in the field. So that's a very good positive with the Ingall because the RAID is very difficult to uh, take off in the field. Going up to the Illuminator, one thing that we will note then is a key difference between both systems is the, and you'll see this in the other video if you go watch it through the tube, is you've got a dedicated throw, much like a PAC-15, and then with your diffuser cap, you can change that throw to a flood function. 
Now, the flood function is very handy for inside structures, inside short distances, and for a very wide throw. But one thing to consider is this is a rubber cap. So if you break this and this falls off, you are losing your flood function, which is a factor because with the RAID, your flood function is built into the unit. So overall, pros, battery cap, super easy to use, selector switch, very rugged, uh, not gonna be accidentally moved. The divergence is very, it takes a definitive turn to move it, which it's not gonna be moved by kit. Um, there is also a single mounting screw, so it's very easy to mount. You do have an extra recoil lug um, for added recoil security, and they do return to zero decently well if your torque spec is, um, is correct, and it's the same when you remount it, and you're making sure you've got forward and down pressure on the uh, unit when you remount it. Cons, if you break your diffuser cap, you lose your flood function. Your fire control button is a little bit smaller as opposed to the RAID, but that's just in a direct comparison. Just in general, it still is very good, so call that a con if you want. It's, not, it's just something to note out. Um, but a definitive con is the size of the screw for the windage and elevation adjustments because you do need a, uh, a, definite, a definite tool to use that that you can't use, say, like a 5.56 casing or a 9 mil casing that you can on most other lasers on the market. Um, last thing to note, there are two blue safety screws for the uh, visible laser and the uh, high power um, IR settings. And on the topic of visible lasers, the Ingall definitely does have a brighter... Uh, it is only red, whereas the Wilcox Radex is red and green, but it does have a brighter visible laser, and we do prefer the visible laser on the Ingall. Moving over to the RAID. So the RAID, as we said, where all the functions are in this dead center of the laser, you're not going to have an offset like you do with the Ingall, but you are not going to be able to use a front sight post. So if you are using a front sight post, and that's something that is uh, required on say a department or an issued gun and that's a need of yours the raid is going to have trouble doing that because where all of your outputs are in the dead center of the device a front sight post is going to block that there are no diffuser caps so um, like we said the flood function of the illuminator is in the device which is very very nice because there's that's not something that you can lose unless your actual laser goes down so definitely a positive of the raid Arguably the nicest feature of the RAID is these selections right here. So what this is, this is a um, variable control output for your uh, illuminator and your lasers independently. So what that means is you can control the output strength on your illuminator and your laser independent of each other. And why that's important is if you're looking at photonic barriers, which means lighting sources that you've got to push through, um, say you need a full power illuminator, but you don't want to have just a crazy screaming hot um, laser. So what you can do is you can tone back your IR laser, but still use a lot of juice on the illumination side because you can independently adjust those, which is very easy to do on the fly during operation. So to note how you can do that on the Ingall, one thing we didn't say is if you do want to use a full power illuminator, but you want to tone back your laser, you are going to have to use your diffuser cap, which does have the same uh, downfall as the flood function because you can lose that and you lose that function. So a very nice feature on the RAID, something we definitely like and honestly use a lot because those of you that have used, say, like a full power PEC 15, if you put that up in dual high and you're not using a diffuser cap, which is a set setting, you can't really change that. So sometimes the diffuser cap brings it too low. You can tone in that laser, which is super nice. And we, uh, frankly, we use that all the time. The um, windage and elevation adjustments are right here. And you can use a 5.56 casing in the field. So much easier to use um, in the field and much easier to, to zero without a specialized tool. Your mounting is gonna be done with two mounting screws and two rails. So much like the single and the recoil lug, you've got two rails here. So both are very secure mounting solutions and both return to zero decently well. Obviously, we, you would want to check your zeros and all that, but um, if using the same torque spec, but you are going to have two screws. So that is an extra mounting point that you are, are going to have to do. So it's not necessarily as fast as the end goal. So the selector switch, um, move into some cons. Like we said, this is very easy to move. Um, and it is something that you can move with kit or a bag or um, just accidentally. And that is something to keep in mind because that is a factor. So if you think your laser's off and it accidentally clips 
up into an on position, then your battery can die and does happen because if your laser is left on, these batteries do die very quickly and that's with any laser. But where you've got the more tactile clicks on the end goal, doesn't come into play as much. Now your um, divergence adjustment on the rear, which both of them are on the rear, which is very nice, on the RAID is a lot easier to turn. Now we're gonna say this is a pro and a con because when you're purchasing the rifle, you can roll this with your knuckle on the fly. And so if you need to change your divergence set of the illuminator, you can do that very easily with your knuckle. Whereas this, you're gonna to have to definitely use your fingers to turn it. You're not gonna be able to just roll your knuckle. Where that's a pro and a con, you can do it on the fly, but also can be changed um, accidentally, say in a bag or with other kit. Your pressure pad is not a pri proprietary pressure pad. So you can use like a Surefire dual switch on this, which is nice. It does not ship with a plug, so um, if you do want to plug that, it's something that you're going to have to, say, steal from a PEC-15 if you've got one lying around, or um, you know that's not going to be an option because it doesn't ship with one. The battery cap, very, very difficult to use. So this is not just your standard, uh, this is not just your standard thread. It is a quarter turn and a detent. So off out of the off the weapon, it doesn't look as hard to use. But if this is mounted up towards a flashlight really close and where it's shrouded right here, it is almost impossible to get any leverage on it to, if your flashlight's tucked up close, to change this in the field. So we find ourselves taking these off rifles to change the battery. Now, not a crazy huge deal because battery life is pretty good. But, you know, if you're in a mill setting where you're out in... Um, a wartime environment and your battery dies, you don't really want to have to take your laser off because that's not a practical situation. So that's something to consider based on how you're using this laser and if it's something that's going to come into play or not. Now, so this is that's probably the biggest downfall of the RAID in our opinion. Now, the, this little OLED display, it's, uh, it is nice and it is handy. It, uh, it can be shut off if you don't want any, uh, any shine from that screen and it can be um, adjusted down so it's a lot smaller, which it does adjust the display. But this is gonna show you your setting that you're on, your function, and your battery life. So is nice to have. You can hide it if you need to, so it's not a negative, but is definitely a positive. Overall, both great lasers. We love them both, we use them both, we use both extensively. Um, really, it just comes down to your application and kind of pick your flavor. Honestly, the, uh, there's some debate on our team whether which one we like better. Some of us like the Ingall, some of us like the RAID, and for various reasons. But both shine, as you can tell, in different, different ways, and both have definitely some negatives. Like we say with night vision, all of this is application-driven. Nothing's a perfect product, and definitely something to consider when you're making your laser purchase on the pros and cons and what you're wanting to accomplish with that device. So that's your basic overview. We'll show you how they ship. They both ship in very, very similar manners. This is the, the Raid X kit. And your Raid's gonna ship in here. You're gonna have a cleaning brush, your user manual, your quick reference guide. It ships with a Surefire dual switch, so you've got your manual for that. Um, you do have an Allen key for the safety screws, and you're going to have a Surefire dual switch that ships with that. Now, moving to the end goal, how this kit's gonna ship is like this. Very, very similar. You have your quick reference guide, your full manual. You also have a piece of Velcro for the pressure pad. You've got your diffuser caps. Um, you can say, see there where we said that the, uh, the plug for the pressure pad port is wired in. That's where we cut that, but we just saved that. Um, your proprietary switch for the Ingall. This is a visible laser override, and this is the function for whatever the laser is set to. And it's gonna ship in the, um, the black kit, and um, both of them will have a battery in them as well. So that's your overview of both lasers. Both are awesome, both shine in different areas, but that's what we've got with the L3 Ingall and the Wilcox Radex.